Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer video, and today's video is going to cover three tiny games you may not have heard about. These are three games in my collection that I've kept for a long time, and I enjoy them, and I will be keeping them in my collection for a long time, because they are games that kind of uh, fit a different niche and a player base, depending on who's here and who wants to play. There's small game that's going to fit like those little more strategic dice rolling type players, or more of the party game genre, or players who like horror and all that kind of stuff, and so these are very different, unique, small games, but they are all on my shelf because I enjoy them so much. We'll cover each of them individually. There's no tier for this. These are just three games that if you're interested in them, we can pick, you can pick them up. We'll talk about the uh, Sword of Fellows, the Sword Art Online game, uh, Doom Links, and then of course Bullets and Teeth. I love these games. So the first game we have here is uh, Sword Art Online, Sword of Fellows, uh, the dice game basically. It's by Kodokawa and it is by Jap Anime Games. This is a one to four player game that takes roughly about 25 to 35 minutes to play. It plays one to four players and you are going to be selecting one of the characters from Sword Art Online. It could be Klein or Kirito or Lizbeth or Silica, Agile, Agil or uh, Asuna and uh, each of these characters kind of functions differently. It plays kind of like Dice Throne, and it plays like a Yahtzee, and it plays like a King of Tokyo, in which you're gonna get a certain number of dice, plus your own unique character die that you'll be rolling to create different types of formations. they are combos that you can also work in with other players. If you can create a really strong combination, that, so that kind of spell or attack can kind of like allow the next player to kind of jump in and do their attack. Uh, up until the point where you fail or don't do enough damage, in which case the uh, bad guys will have a chance to damage you. Uh, each player has a certain number of HP, which you'll be tracking based on these little markers here. And you'll be trying to go from the lowest portion of the citadel uh, to the mid portion, and then finally you'll be doing it to the uh, high portion, the upper section. And then finally, if you can do all that, you'll go to the upper section, the end of the world uh, final battle. And you'll be fighting against like the main bad guy of the first season slash first arc of Sword Art Online. What I love about this game is it is light in the sense of how you play the game, but how you utilize the characters and when you choose and what you choose to roll the dice and being able to combo your attacks, uh, gaining unique special items throughout the game as you defeat certain portions of the board. And, and that kind of thing makes it very, very, a very, very strong experience. This feels like you're part of the world. In fact, it's so compelling that at the end of the game, basically you're gonna have characters start passing away, uh, it's very likely at least, and your objective is to use Kirito to defeat the final boss. And in order to do that, he has to hit that full on auto Yahtzee attack. But as players kind of fall, they can kind of benefit you by giving you their dice and allowing you to have like additional re-rolls and whatnot to kind of get exactly what you need to do it. It is always, every time I play this game, it's either a, um, a win or a loss and it's by the skin of your teeth. And for a dice chucking game that's all about luck, that's exactly what you want to experience and it makes you want to jump in and play again. Every experience I've had playing this game has been a fun one. This game has been sta has stayed in my collection for years now and whenever somebody wants to play a game like King of Tokyo or whatever, I always bring this one out. And it's a tiny game, they don't know what to expect with it, they don't know what to expect like a type of dice chucker and whatnot. Um, and they see it and they're like, eh, I, I guess I'll give it a try, Sword Art Online's not my thing, or I don't like dice chuckers, but at the end of the game, the experience has always been a really, really positive one, and I've had numerous friends decide to pick up this game just from our one playthrough. So if you're interested in a dice chucker that's skin of your teeth, tight, a lot of fun with each character utilizing their own different dice, as well as trying to create different types of combinations, whether it be you need a straight, you need pairs, you need all the same type, and being able to combo your attacks all in the world of Sword Art Online, then this Sword of Fellows board game is the one you should check out. Have you ever heard of the phrase that I don't need to be faster than the bear, I need to be faster than you? Well, Bullets and Teeth is that game in a nutshell. It's a three to five player game that takes like 20 to 25 minutes to play. And it's a game in which one player is gonna start off as the bait and everybody's gonna start with a number of cards in their hand. There are two types of decks. There are the bullet deck and the teeth deck. Teeth are bad guys and bullets are cards you're going to use to defeat them. On your turn, whether you're the bait or not, you're basically going to be drawing a card from the bullet death deck. You're going to be revealing a card from the teeth deck, putting it into play, and then playing either a card or cards to defeat monsters or add more to the game. What's interesting about this game here is the only person that can be removed from the game is the person who is the bait. On their turn, they can play a number of cards as long as those cards are all the same color or you have a way to combo so you can play multiple different cards of different colors. And basically, if there are any monsters 
monsters left that can attack you at the end of your turn and you're the bait, you're out of the game. Everybody else who is not the bait is going to do the same thing. They will draw a card from the bullet deck, they'll put a card from the teeth deck onto the field, and then they are going to have the opportunity um, to play one card, which can either help the person who's going to be the bait next, or is going to hinder them by adding more cards from the teeth deck to the field. If you survive as the bait, you're going to be moving that bait token uh, to the right, and play is always going to go to the left. And you're trying to be the last person standing. There's no way you can beat this game, period. You could not, even if, technically, you could go through this whole deck, which you couldn't, you would still lose to the monsters therein. And that's the point of the game. Your objective is just to last as long as possible and throw everybody under the bus. This game has been met with a field of emotions when playing with my friends, and I love it for that reason. There's always some um, aggression and like uh, sad, hurt feelings. It's, it is a game that's all about that. Now, this is going to be a very specific type of play group, which is why it's kind of in this... I picked these three games for a reason that, like, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of a wide variety of types of games, but this one has always felt good, regardless of whether I win or not. I love dumping a ton of zombies on a player that's just about to die, and all of a sudden they find a way to get out, and now it's their neighbor who's in trouble, and they're like, help me, and I'm like, oh no, you're my friend, I'm going to help you, I'm going to try and get rid of these zombies, but it's too late. Oh, I messed myself over. Or... Oh, or wait, no, actually I'm able to move the zombie over to the guy I want to pass away. And it's based on really what kinds of cards are in the hand. Now these cards range in a variety of function and use. Some of them are going to move the bait. Some of them are going to allow you to get rid of or immobilize zombies so that the next bait has to deal with them. But there's always kind of this catch-22 where if you don't defeat enough of them and you just kind of halter them for now, it's likely that you'll become the bait again and you might die before it comes time. Whereas when you're playing as the person who's not the bait, you have to decide, is it likely the bait is going to come to me? And do I want to remove monsters, irregardless of whether Bill over here is going to pass away, because next time it might be my turn to have to deal with them. I love bullets and teeth. This is a solid little party game. It's all about outwitting and outmaneuvering your opponents up until the very last second. And as you can tell, I like games that always come down to the wire. This is another one that does that with beautiful artwork too, I might add. And my final game I want to talk about, which is Doomlings, a two to six player game in which you're basically going to be drawing little Doomling characters. Uh, basically, each round is going to involve something new and interesting happening through the ages that could involve something beneficial for everybody, like being able to draw cards, or something negative, like discarding cards or losing cards on the field. Eventually, there's going to be calamities that come up every round that can be very dangerous for players, and finally the game will just end. On your turn, you'll have a number of cards in your hand based on how much gene pool of numbers you have, these little cards who dictate like your hand size, um, and you're able to play one card on your turn. You'll look through your hand of cards, they all have a number, and that number is victory points. Additionally, they might have effects that will give you some unique power or something that is going to give you more bonus at the end of the game. And then, of course, there are unique traits that you can only play one of in the game that are very, very strong. This card has, this game has a ton of flexibility. The, the ways of playing are unique and endless, and there's a ton of variability in the game. This is a yeah, party game for the ages. I really, really enjoy Doomlings. There are a ton of unique characters to them that all have unique actions and abilities and combos that just fit and work very well. It's, it's tableau management at its simplest, yet it's most creative. I love the artwork. They're basically just little cute balls, little jeans and whatnot that you just play down that are all like interacting and doing their own thing, and there's so many of them too. Playing this with just the basic sample, which is the only copy I have, I've kept this since then, they've made this game into almost a TCG of sorts. There are holographic cards and rare cards and packs and whatnot, and this game has blown up you. I've seen it in Target and all kinds of places. And for good measure, this is a lot of fun. This is what I would say is the next type of exploding kittens type game. If you've never seen Doomlings, you have a family and you play or party game experience, you wanna jump people into a game that's very simple, this is the one to do it. It's quick, simple, straightforward, play a card, uh, draw a card, play a card, pass. And add up all your points at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. With just enough of like shenanigans and fun, no one's really getting upset in the game. It's just about having fun, creating the best tableau you possibly can, while the age of the deck affects you, and the genes or the, the traits will allow you to gain more benefits uh, to hopefully impress the other players with your huge point score at the end of the game. I love Doomlings. Solid game, huge recommendation, but actually all three of these are wonderful games in and of themselves. 
and if you're interested in picking them up, there's a link down below. So these are just three of my picks of three small games that might fit in your collection. I try to make a variety of the three different games for different player bases and how heavy you want the game to feel. Obviously, Sword Art is the heaviest, followed then by the Bullets and Teeth game, and finally, Doomlings being a very light, family-friendly party game, but they are all a ton of fun. I have brought these out for tons of parties. As you can see, all of these boxes are really worn. That's because they have been used thoroughly and enjoyed by my entire playgroup. I've played with my grandma and grandpa Doomlings and my sister, no big deal. And then all the way up to my gamer group, I played the board game Sword of Fellows, which this one was probably the most surprising of the bunch of the games. Uh, whereas the other ones, people were just having a good time to begin with. They knew it was gonna be super fun after the first round or two. This one like ramps up. And it really just depends on your experience as to like the type of experience you want have for a game as to what you want to play. But if you're looking for three tiny small board games that you have never played before, maybe you, maybe you found one of these, I should say, then you can check a look, like I said, the link down below in the description. If you think you have, we have, we have earned your subscription here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos here every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays. Sundays are live stream and Wednesdays we have a whatnot live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST, one on whatnot, and then the other on Sunday is everywhere. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys play your tiny games. And I also wonder what your favorite tiny games are in the comments next time.